Hi everyone, I am Mr. Gaming Guitarist, and The Flash is back. Hooray! And uh, currently right now, um, just to note if anyone cares, my... Because of course, you know, no one watches my videos, but I always try to stay positive. Anyways, the Legends of Tomorrow is going on right now, and that means I'm missing out on the episode that's going on right now. So from now on, I will be recording my reviews of The Flash immediately after The Flash is on. Uh, that hasn't changed, but in, but of course, that means I won't be able to finish watching Legends of Tomorrow in time, and I won't be able to do an episode review of it when it ends. Uh, locally on my time, which is a central standard time at 9 p.m. is when that would finish. So I don't know when, but it will be a few hours later. Uh, that's all. So I'm sorry if you watch my Legends of Tomorrow reviews and you want and you like to watch them, you know, as soon as it's finished being done live but because of this new schedule change I can't ha I can't guarantee that uh, my Legends of Tomorrow reviews will always be on time and I'm sorry if you were expecting that but that's just a quick little disclaimer I had to just get out of the way so anyways let's talk about this episode of the flash so yeah a lot of good uh, a lot of good things happen uh in this episode you know there wasn't a whole i guess you could say this episode wasn't completely filled with hype um like i'm used to from this show but of course you know there's never a bad episode of the flash so uh, so this i felt this episode was completely solid and I don't even know what this was titled, so let me just look that up very quickly. Alright, this was... This was Season 3, Episode 10. Okay, season three, episode ten. I don't know exactly what's going on here. Episode nine was the present. That's the mid-season finale. Yeah, there's no. Uh, all I know. I'm sorry. I don't know the episode title. Well, anyways, this review is going off to an amazing start. So, if, okay, so anyways, if you did not watch this episode of The Flash, this is your spoiler warning, go ahead and watch that before watching this review. Unless you don't care about spoilers, then I guess you can keep on watching. So, this episode starts off with Barry and Iris, they have now officially settled Libby. I'm sorry. I keep. I've been yawning a lot in my videos. Uh, uh, I apologize for that. So this episode starts off with Barry and Iris in their home now, uh, which it's kind of funny because Barry's loft that they got, you know, with him and Iris, that place looks nicer than the place that Oliver and Felicity lived in. And yet, how was Barry able to afford that place when he just left, when he just quit his job, but then he just got his job back? So I guess things are balancing themselves out. I thought that was just a kind of funny thing. And so he's he's having these nightmares about, you know, seeing Iris getting killed by Savitar over and over again. And, you know, of course they struggle with it, but... Well, the one thing I'm glad about is that by the end of this episode, or you know, clo or closer towards the middle, um, I'm glad Barry finally told Iris. I'm glad the team knows about this too, you know, because there's lots of things where if you tell someone about the future, then it's a bad thing. But then that domino analogy that HR had where by changing out a few of those dominoes or a few of those events, then the future can change. So 
I re- so I thought that was um, kind, of, kind of interesting. We never really got to see things like that happening. And we still got to see Caitlyn continue to struggle with her with her powers. And she struggles with Killer Frost coming out. But it seems to be happening much faster. Because like the second, like when she was leaving Julian's office, the second her uh, ba- the battery for her uh, cuffs ran out, It's like her eyes started changing again, and so it's like you always have to keep that phone, I mean, or or those cuffs plugged in on lockdown. I I still think it's kind of funny how how she had to stand there and just what looked like a goddamn lightning charger to just plug it in there and just sit there and wait. I, I still think that's really funny, but anyway, so I'm glad that, you know, Killer Frost... The story of Killer Frost continues to develop. Um, what else happened in this episode? Oh yeah, so Barry got mad at Wally, um, and it's because he didn't w- want the future to change, and so he kept trying to, you know, he ch- kept trying to discipline him. But really, what it was, he was scared about the future, and we got some really great scenes with Wally. Like we've finally get to see our current main timeline Wally in action. We saw him, you know, with all those fights against Pl- is it Blunder with a B or a P? I think it's I think it's Plunder. I'm not I, I I'm I'm gonna go with Plunder. So it's funny how he seemed like a normal villain. Someone that would be pretty easy for the Flash to take out, but because he's so distracted by knowing about the headline that he saw with him in the future, it keeps distracting him, and you know he keeps tripping it up. So it's it was, <coughs> it was a it's a good payoff because you know he Wally gets a chance to have more experience by taking him down, while of course being able to change the present or change the future by instead of the Flash taking him down, it's now Kid Flash. So, uh, uh, and then, of course, you know, the news and the media and now all the star, not not star city, all the um, central city citizens are starting to recognize him as a hero. And, you know, I think it's pretty cool that we've got our kid Flash rising and being established as a hero. I'm, I'm, I really enjoy that. Um, What else? Oh, yeah. So HR wanted to open Star Labs and... So it, I thought that was kind of a weak thing. Like, it, it made for some comic relief, but I'd say that was the weakest part of this episode. Um, now, the thing with them not wanting to tell Joe about it, them not wanting, the team not wanting to tell Joe about Iris getting killed in the future, I can understand where it's coming from, but people hiding, but from what we know in the past with this show, people hiding secrets from each other doesn't really always end too well uh, when they when the other person eventually finds it out on their own. So I don't know how that's going to play out, but I'm very nervous to see how Joe reacts to that when he finds out eventually when he finds out the team has been hiding that secret from him for like we don't know how long that's going to go on for. I hope it doesn't go on forever. Like, I thought that Barry wasn't going to tell Iris about his nightmares until, much, until like, I thought they were going to stretch that shit out for a few episodes, but I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad that they take things that shouldn't, or the tension is in there. I'm glad that they're finally finding ways to resolve it. And one other thing I wanted to mention, so when they were going into the future, how uh, Barry vibed or how Cisco bought a vibe Barry and them into the future. When you saw, when they were reading out the headlines and writing them down, one that popped out in my mind is they mentioned the Music Meister. And of course, we all know them. Well, if you don't know yet, because this has been in the news articles, the Music Meister will be in the Flash and Supergirl crossover musical, which... Um, I'm very much looking forward to. I normally hate musicals, but because it's Flash and Supergirl, of course I'm gonna watch it. So, um, so that's I like that like little Easter egg or 
hints of the future. And then we found, if we find out like about a gorilla attack in Central City, I think it was. Um, so yeah, of course, that means we're going to get Grodd back. And then we heard another timeline that said Killer Frost has... Sorry. We get something about Killer Frost being hidden in the future. Or, I mean, kill, uh, see, I, I don't know what the hell is going on with me. It's like I can't speak. Uh, we get Killer Frost, and she is uh, Killer Frost, and she's fighting and escaping and doing, doing criminal things. And, of course, that worries Caitlyn a great deal. And I really liked that when they were in the time vault, you know, when Barry told Iris about that, you know, Iris's reaction was real, like seeing how scared she was and all this stuff. Um, and looking into the time vault, it was, it's, uh, you know, that was a, that was a very believable reaction to that, finding out that you were about to get killed. So yeah. Um, and of course, seeing the Barry and Iris have a house warm. Well, it's not really a house, a loft warming party. That was nice to see. Uh, so Barry now is a pet turtle. I don't know if that was in the comics, but mm. um, and I think it was pretty cool that they, <laughs> no pun intended, how how now Julian is in Team Flash, but we got to see him. Uh, him and Cisco make this uh, solar energy charger uh, necklace for Caitlyn, and it's a uh, it's a blue snowflake. <laughs> so it's like the the cold symbolism, and it just doesn't end. Uh, so yeah, I okay. So I thought this episode was great. Um, I give this an eight out of ten, and I sincerely apologize. Uh, if this was a bad review, because as I don't know if you can tell, I'm struggling to speak. Today, uh, you saw me coughing a lot and yawning a lot, and um, I know that I am the least healthiest person that I know. But I'm, but of course, you know, I never want to give up on my videos, uh, and I always want to make sure I'm here delivering content to you and if the certain content that I deliver is fails I, at least I'm glad I know I tried instead of not doing it at all so anyways I'm Mr. Gaming Guitarist um, if this review of mine didn't scare you away from my channel you can subscribe and see some more videos from me you can also watch my the N4G TV podcast that I host on the N4G TV YouTube channel. And you can also support my channel on Patreon. I would appreciate it. And so, yeah, so I will see you for my Legends of Tomorrow mid-season premiere review. See you then. Bye.